Perfect, and just have a look towards me and be happy with my existence. <laughs> Mistakes 90% of photographers make on their first wedding. I'm actually on my way to a wedding. It is, however, not my first wedding. That was probably 18 years ago at this point. I've done about 1,000 weddings, or maybe I stopped counting around 1,000. I feel like it's probably more than that. And if you're interested in seeing this behind the scenes wedding day that I'm on my way to, uh, you, can, you can do that. If you're part of the member's website, member's website comes with a lot more, uh, all of my full-length courses, my presets, lots, a lot of downloads. If you're watching this before July 14th, 2022, which is my birthday, uh, you can actually get into the member's website for $30 a month rather than $40 a month. So get in by the link in the description and you can, you can have access to that. Otherwise, uh, sorry. And if you'd like to see the behind the scenes from today, you can, you can do that right now. Mistakes that 90% of photographers make. Number one, I'm actually gonna give you one that I stole directly from Sam Hurd. He's a friend and I hope that he doesn't mind me stealing and giving him full credit here. If you want to use reference images for your first shoots, if you're just not sure, you think you're going to forget poses and you'd rather just have some photos there, don't have them on your phone. Don't be referencing your phone, looking up and down and scrolling and being like, hey, can you do this? You can do it in a sneaky way. You can actually take the photo. So you can either take the photo or you can load them onto your memory card. So they are the first images that you actually see whenever you hit the right button. So you're taking the photos and then you hit right and it goes to the, the first image. And that can be anything. That can be your day of schedule, that can be a photo list, or those can be poses and images for you to quickly reference throughout the day. So thanks Sam Hurd for tip number one. Number two is to take a single photo before you leave the house. So you pick your camera up, you load your bag, you're, you're on your way out the door. Take one single photo to make sure that everything's functional, that you have cards in the camera, that your battery's charged, just by doing that simple task of taking a single photo, it will save you from doing something silly like not bringing your cards to a wedding day. Also, stash cards everywhere. Have cards in the glove box of your car and your wallet or your purse. Make sure you always have backup cards because it is a thing that you will forget at some point in your career. And I've actually seen lots of professionals uh, do this, unfortunately. Next up, having the wrong lenses. If you think you're gonna bring the kit lens that came with your camera to, the, to a wedding day, I would recommend bringing a 50 millimeter lens to at least a common, like you can get a lot better photos with a 50 than you can with a kit lens, especially when it starts to get really dark. I know high high SO on camera is great these days, but it is important to have the correct tools for the job. So don't stress, don't bring 150 lenses. You don't need to bring the full kit, including your, your wildlife lenses, but definitely make sure you're bringing the correct lenses for a wedding day. I have lots of videos on the channel if you wanna learn more about gear. Next up, going it alone. If you know somebody that shot a lot of weddings and they can be your second photographer on the day, first wedding day for you, bring them. Spend a little bit extra money, maybe you're spending all your profit to bring somebody to have your back and to give you tips and suggestions. And also they can be somebody that you can bounce the schedule off of for the wedding day to make sure that you have enough time for the sections. Next mistake is to make sure that you have a contract. If you don't have a contract, if you've signed up for Focal, you get access to a default contract there. Make sure you have some sort of contract that outlines the terms and what you're actually there to do so that there is no guessing. If the couple hired you and all of a sudden they're expecting video coverage, make sure you know that before the, going into the wedding day. Don't rely on just email communications. People are kind of all over the place when planning a wedding. So make sure you have everything in writing and reconfirm the deliverables before the wedding day. You don't want to find out at the wedding day that you're supposed to do a same day edit of photos. Make sure that you are both on the exact same page going into the wedding day for just less stress overall. Next up, not shooting raw. Make sure you shoot raw. Cards are cheap these days. Just take the raw photos in case you clip the whites a little bit and you, get, you gotta do some recovery and post-production. If you're shooting JPEGs, it's, it's gonna be an issue. If you're shooting raw, it's not gonna be a problem. Next up, not bringing snacks. Guys, guys, they have snacks. Snacks, 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 snacks. If you don't bring snacks, you might not get fed. My first few weddings were definitely a little bit sketchy and uh, in some cases I did not get a plate of food even though it was in the contract and we talked about it. It's not, sometimes it just doesn't, doesn't come together, you don't get fed. So make sure that you can or there, there's maybe a restaurant or something nearby that you can go grab some quick takeaway if required. Next up, talking the actual wedding day through with the couple prior to the wedding day. Don't just let them send you a schedule. Make sure that you kind of talk through all the pieces. A lot of information comes out of that that, oh, cool, you're doing a first look, but there's, it's not on the schedule. Uh, we should include that somewhere, or maybe they forgot to include travel time. It's a much better thing to figure all of that out prior to the wedding day rather than arriving and realizing you don't have enough time. Next up, studio management software. Set this up from the very beginning. 
it is the biggest pain to try to go, if you've already booked a full wedding season, to try to enter all of that into some sort of studio management system. Do it from the beginning. You can you join up over at Focal and you can actually invoice people and start getting paid. And everything just looks very, very professional and it doesn't take a lot of time to set up. Next up, take more detail photos than you would expect. One, because quite honestly, you're gonna come back and your details aren't gonna be as strong as you thought that they were because you're, you're probably in a compressed timeline and you have to do them quick. So overall, it's gonna make your couple a lot happier. Beyond that, they are also incredibly good marketing assets if you are trying to get into the wedding photography industry. It is important to create marketing material and creating marketing material and doing detail photos pretty much is gonna be what any venue wants. That they're gonna want maybe a couple of photos of the, the couple themselves, but for the most part, they're gonna to wanna to see the table setups, the way that they did the room, and you're gonna start a very good venue vendor relationship right off the start if you do good detail work. Also, if you're getting published in magazines or you might get published in a magazine someday, it's pretty detail heavy, so make sure that you are getting details. Make sure your detail game is strong and uh, don't just assign them to the second photographer and, and send them out to do them. Make sure that you get the images that you want yourself and make sure that there is a little bit of time in the timeline in order for you to do that. Next up, charge your batteries. Sounds simple enough, but I have seen it done more than two weeks ago. I was actually in a wedding and uh, I won't mention who, but somebody showed up and they didn't have batteries and they had to start charging the batteries. They had like a half of one or something, I don't know. Just make sure all of your stuff is charged and ready to go. And again, take that single photo before leaving the house to make sure that everything is in good working order. Next up, bring backup equipment. As a wedding photographer, it is critically important that if your main camera goes down, you fall into a fountain, whatever it might be, you gotta have backup gear ready to finish the day and your iPhone is unfortunately not going to be the best tool. Next up, Couple's probably gonna give you a shot list, maybe. Maybe they're gonna give you some family photos, whatever it might be. Make sure you make your own shot list. And as I mentioned in the first tip, maybe put that as the first photo that you take on the wedding day. And uh, you can keep referencing back to it. Or you can print it off and you can actually check it off. Um, that is fine as well. But having a shot list is important, specifically when timelines get a little bit crunched. Say hair and makeup go a little bit too long and all of a sudden you have to do everything that you thought you had an hour and a half to do in 15 minutes. Having a shot list will help save you in that situation. Next up, Last up, we're almost at the wedding, behind the scenes day, coming up to you if you're a member. Last tip is that if you're uncertain about a location, maybe you've never been to the park or you've never been to the venue, go and scout. There's nothing wrong with scouting. I know it's frowned upon and the photographers in the internet will be like, I never scout anything. I'm the greatest photographer in the world. Um, go and go on a sunny day at the same time that you'll likely be taking photos because that's kind of worst case scenario or best case maybe if it's if it's sunrise or sunset. But I would say middle of the day like it is right now, going to scout the location that I'm going to have to do photos at is helpful and it shows me the worst case scenario. So if it's cloudy, I get there, it's cloudy. Perfect, the, the light's good everywhere and it's not a problem. But to prepare for the worst case, we'll at least give you a, a few spaces that if family's like, where can we go for family photos? And you have that one covered area that's open shade, you can suggest that as one less decision you have to make on the wedding day. Uh, I feel like you definitely, for the first number of weddings, will absolutely get decision fatigue. You're doing so much, you're doing so many little tiny micro calculations and troubleshooting that you will actually be very both physically and mentally exerted when you come home from the wedding day. The less troubleshooting that you do on the wedding day, the better. So plan as well as you possibly can going into this day. And that's the way to have a, a less stressful wedding day, which means you are able to create better work. And know that by wedding, I would say number six or number seven, it becomes a heck of a lot easier that you know the flow of everything, you know how to troubleshoot basic wedding situations and things become significantly easier. Also, this isn't on the list, but make sure you hydrate, drink lots of water. Uh, also, if, if you are a person that consumes sugar, bring some sugar. Um, I like to have sour kids. Talked about this on the channel before, but basically the, the sugar, it replenishes those the, the parts of your brain that make decisions and they get depleted and then all of a sudden you're back. Maybe there's no science there and you just, I don't know, maybe it's an excuse for me to eat candy. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in the full behind the scenes wedding video that you have been seeing, you can watch it and it's for you. That's all for me today here in the car. About to arrive and uh, see you again on the behind the scenes video, I guess. Welcome to the exclusive behind the scenes wedding day. You are on top of my Canon R3 right now. And the 50 millimeter F1.8, the little guy, is actually on the front. So not the F1.2 version, which is very, very large and heavy. And hopefully you'll be able to see the settings up here. If not, um, I'll do a, a slideshow walkthrough of all of the settings and we can talk a little bit about that at the end of the video. Let's head into the getting ready section of the day. I feel like my pacing got really weird there.
gear that I have in my bag today. 7200 f2.8, 16. It's a little 16, I, I love having this lens. I basically use this as just in case I have to do a group shot in a tight environment. 85 Samyang down there, and on my second camera body, which is a Canon R6, I have the 35 millimeter f1.8. 